Hello and welcome back guys to this new video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to make this type of part in Siemens NX. Okay, as you can clearly see, okay, the entire part looks like it's a twisted body. Okay, so we are going to understand how to make this type of part in NX. For those of you who already know how to use NX, okay, what I can do is I can give you a brief rundown of how I have made this part over here so that you can see it prior and then try to mimic the same. So what I have done here is I've started with a sketch. Okay, here I have started with a sketch, then I have created an, an extrude at a certain distance. Okay, so all those values you can assume by yourself or else you can wait for me and we will do it together. Okay, we have created an extrude at a certain distance. If you want to see the value for the extrude, the value for the extrude is 150 start distance, 400 end distance, 200 by 60 is the length of the model, length and width of the model. Then after creating the extrude, I have created a blend which ensures it creates a total curvature like this okay a full round blend then i have created a sketch a circle basically okay here on the top and you can define any diameter value to that then i use extrude command to create a hole over here okay to remove the materials from that area then i use mirror geometry command to create a similar geometry on the other side then i use move command to rotate this geometry with an angle of 90 degree then i use through curve command to create this you know twisted geometry over here and then finally i use the unite command to join everything together okay to merge every body together and then i use a chamfer command so let us now understand okay how to make this type of part by ourselves okay if i want to start from the basics so first of all i'll start with a new part file so here what i'm doing is i'm starting with a new part file and here I'm defining a name to it and a location to it. So let's say I will say this name as link basic to, or you can define any name you want to. Okay. Now I'm clicking on sketch. Okay. I'm starting sketch. I'm selecting, let's say the front plane, or you can select the XY plane or YZ plane, whatever you wish to. Okay. You can select any one plane for now. That is totally fine. Your model orientation will change. Everything else will remain the same. Then I'm selecting okay. Now I am activating center rectangle and here using center rectangle, I am creating a rectangle like this from the origin. I am defining the total length of my rectangle as 200. So here the length of my rectangle is 200 and I am defining the total width of my rectangle as 60. So total width of my rectangle is 60. So here the length is 200 and the width of my rectangle is 60. So after defining both the values of 200 and 60, I will click on finish. So that means I'm completing my sketch. So here I'll click on finish. Then after selecting my sketch, I'll click on extrude. Now here in extrude, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my extrude with a distance of 150. Okay. I'm going to start my extrude, not exactly at the point where my sketch is, but I'm going to leave a distance of 150 from the starting point of my sketch. So here in the start distance, I'm going to enter 150 and here in the end distance, I'm going to take it up to 400. These values are totally customizable. You can define your own values later on. Okay. If you are following along, you can follow along with the similar values. Then I can click OK for my extrude once it is done. Now, once my extrude is completed, now I have to create a complete round over here. Okay. Full round. To create a full round, what I can do is irrespective of the width, Okay, I can activate this command called face blend. Okay, I'll just zoom into this part. Okay, now what I can do is I can activate this command called face blend here. Okay, so after activating face blend, this dialog box will come. I'll just reset the dialog box. Okay, face blend dialog box will come. Now in face blend dialog box, what I need to do is in place of two face option, I have to select this option called three face. In place of two face option, I have to select this option called three face. Here in phase one, okay, here in the first set of faces, uh, in phase one, first of all, I have to make sure I have select single face over here. I am selecting the output as single face, okay. So here in phase one, I have to select single face and then what I can do is I can select any one side face. So let's say I'm selecting this rightmost side face. Then here in face set 2, again single face and the extreme left face. Okay. And here in the middle face, again a single face and the face which is away from the origin, this one is what I need to select. 
okay once i do this three selection okay in the middle phase this one and if i click okay this is how the result is going to look like so my sketch is over here and this is how the roundness is going to come and irrespective of the width it will automatically come based on the selection of the faces okay now what i can do is before we continue to mirror and all i need to add a hole over here okay so adding a hole is very simple either you can use the hole command or you can use the sketch command and create a sketch and then create a hole so let's say in this case i'll be using the hole command so i'm going for hole command so i'm waiting for the hole command to be active here i'm selecting a simple hole i want to create a custom hole of diameter 80 which is going to have a depth through body Okay, I'm going to create a simple hole of diameter 80. A simple hole, hole diameter is 80. Here the hole size is set to custom. And the depth is going to be through body. I'm not activating any chamfer conditions. Not cha No start chamfer, no end chamfer as of now. Because I'm going to define chamfer later on. Now to place the hole, I'm going to select the center point. Okay, I'm going to select the center point of this arc. So selecting the center point of this arc will place the hole exactly in the center of the arc. And then I can click OK. And now my hole is also ready. Now in this example, I have created this same thing with the help of cut, extrude cut. So if you are facing any difficulty in creating a hole, you can also create a circle and remove the material from there. Okay. Once you are done with this, then we can continue with the next step. In the next step, we want this exact geometry to be there on the other side as well. So that we can rotate it. So to do that, I can click on more. I can click on mirror geometry. Once I click on mirror geometry, so mirror geometry again, I'll repeat it's over here, mirror geometry. Once I click on mirror geometry, I have to activate or I have to select the body which I want to mirror. So in this case, this is the body which I want to mirror. Then here in mirror plane, I'm going to select the plane on which my sketch was created earlier. So if you remember, on whichever plane you created your sketch, you have to select that plane. So once you select that plane and once you mirror and once you click OK, this is how the result is going to look like. So now you have a mirror geometry output over here. Now once this part is done, what we need to do next is I want to rotate this body by 90 degree. And to do so, we can use the transform command. Okay. We can use the transform command. The shortcut for transform command is control plus T. T for transform. Okay. So I'll press control plus T. That is T for transform. Then I want to create, uh, first of all, I'll reset the transform command so that for all of us, the setting will be the same. I need to first select the object, then click on this appropriate handle. So in this case, I want to rotate this object like this. So I'm clicking on this button over here. Okay, I'll just zoom in so that you can clearly see. So I'm clicking on this button over here and I'm rotating this with the angle of 90 degree. Okay, now after I do so, you can notice one thing is happening. Because of the transform command, the entire thing is getting transformed. Okay, not only this geometry, but the entire thing is getting transformed because here, move parent op option is checked okay so what i need to do is i need to uncheck this option called move parent so that the parent geometry should not be moved inside setting and i'll click ok now once i click ok if i click ok over here it is saying it cannot be transformed okay i just clicked ok a bunch of times so it is saying it cannot be transformed the only reason it cannot be transformed because it is not uh, you know it is it will break the associativity with the body Okay, so obviously we don't want to transform it like that. So what I can do if we cannot transform it like that, then what we can do, we can use this command in synchronous modeling called as move. Okay, if you see in my example, I have used the same command here, that is move faces. Okay, so here also I'm going to use the same thing. So I'm going to click on move command. So here, if I click on move command, it will ask me to select the set of faces which I want to move. And I'm going to create a box and select all the faces which I want to move. Okay, now after selecting the bunch of faces, the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the pivot point. So here I have to click in this button called specify pivot point. I'm going to specify my origin as the pivot point. So ensure that you are selecting the origin as your pivoting point. Now here in the vector, okay, in the distance vector, select this direction or the arrow which is pointing towards the body. Okay, so your pivoting point and the arrow should look like this. Okay, direction vector will be like this, pivoting point will be like this. And once you define both the things, this is how the geometry is going to look like. Now in angle, I'm going to type 90. Okay, in angle, I'm going to type 90 and I'm going to click OK. And the pivoting is done. 
okay so i hope all of you understood how to create this pivoting part over here so far okay so most of our part is ready now the final thing we need to do is we need to create a blend or uh, you know a body in between the two bodies so that it, it will be tangential before i do so i'll just hide my sketch because i don't want to see my sketch here to hide the sketch you can right click on the sketch and you can choose to hide okay from here or else from the navigator itself you can choose to hide now what i can do i can go to the surface tab and i can choose through curve mesh command okay so please follow along i can choose this option called through curve mesh this is uh, or you can also choose through curve in this case through curve will do a better job because through curve mesh will require some primary curves also so i'll choose through curve okay so to go to the surface tab and choose through curve command now once you activate through curve command i would recommend to reset the command so that for all of us the setting will be the same okay so reset the command first thing first say make change the selection to single curve okay change the selection filter to single curve and then select the curves one by one so here i am selecting the first curve the second the third and the fourth okay so whichever you selected a first curve you have to remember that and you can see over here it is you know creating a closed loop and the arrow or the origin point is over here now after my selection for the first section is done section one is completed then i'm going to click on add okay or this plus button to add a new section now once i click on this plus button or add button then what i can do is i can select another section one two three and four once i do that you can see a complete body is getting created between the two bodies but it is not smooth okay it is straight it is not smooth it is straight so what i can do is i can tell my software that the first section is going to be tangent to this faces one two three and four so here you can see my first section is now tangent to all four faces okay same way preserve shape should be active so that the shape is maintained and again the last section should be tangent to this set of four faces so one two three and four Okay, so I guess some problem with the tangency. Again, I'll repeat. Okay, so I guess I selected the wrong face. Again, I'll start. Some extra face is also selected. So again, I'll do one, two, three, and four. So proper selection means you have to only select these four faces. You should not select the face which is there inside over here. Here in flow direction, I'll select isoparametric. Okay, so that the body smoothness is maintained. And here I'll click OK. So now I have an output like this, okay, the output which we desired, the output which we wanted. Now, first of all, we will go back to the home tab again. We'll use the unite command, okay, here we have the unite command to unite this target body to this remaining set of bodies. And then I'll use the chamfer command over here to chamfer it, let's say with the value of 5, symmetry chamfer, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2. So you can see the entire thing getting selected okay using the chamfer command and i can click okay if this same result you are able to create that means you are you know having a good knowledge of siemens nx okay and you have followed along this tutorial quite well okay so hope you are doing well okay and i hope you don't have any doubts in this one so if you have any doubts please uh, you know list it in the comment section below if you want to learn detail about through curve command or you know any other detail about this set of options please let me know in the comment section below so that i can create some future videos on those topics okay so thank you very much for watching have a great day ahead thank you very much